Hi, we're here to talk to you about how we are rethinking app distribution on Google Play. We'll talk about the new app publishing format, the Android app bundle, which we've launched at I.O. this year, and um, all the features we've built since kind of in, in this area. Uh, but to start with, let's talk about the app size. Uh, why does the app size even matter? So you all know that app size is important. We shared with you this chart earlier this year at Google I.O. According to Play Store data, as app size gets bigger, their install success rate goes down. Users don't have enough storage, especially in emerging markets, where um, the connections are slow, the data is expensive. And I want you to think about your own experience, too. How many of you have seen this message by Google Play asking you to uninstall apps to make space for more installs? Millions of users see that every day. We started to look into this more closely recently, and we found out that clearing up space is a major driver of uninstalls. And this is obviously a problem for entry-level devices and emerging markets, but it's also a problem for users who fill up their devices with HD content. Take the US and the UK, for example. One in five users are getting to the point that they run out of space in which they can't really install or update anymore. A key request we've heard from developers is also for help understanding and reducing uninstalls. We ran a user research study where, with our users in the US about the reasons why they uninstall apps. And what we've heard as the leading reasons why users uninstall within the first day is quality. Quality is something we do care a lot, and as Tamsin has said, we have a separate Android Vital session later where we can tell you all about how to improve the performance of your app. However, the leading reasons why users uninstall the app after it's been on the device for a month is to save up space. So what this shows you is that there are two big reasons why you should care about the size of your app. Bigger apps lose acquisitions, And bigger apps also get uninstalled more often. I think many of you are kind of already aware of this. So you would think that everyone would be doing everything in their power to reduce the size of their app. And yet, apps and games keep getting bigger. Over the last five years, uh, the size of the app has effectively went five times. It's five times larger on average. Newer devices have more storage, but apps and games and um, HD videos and you know, high-res photos, all of those things are getting larger, too. Uh, now, there are also some very good reasons why uh, the apps are getting bigger. Kobe, tell us more about it. So the first reason is that you simply keep add, adding awesome features and services to your app. And you come up with new ideas, and you take advantage of device capabilities. But with every new feature, you obviously increase the app size. And you know, Android has this amazing diversity. There are thousands of devices to choose from. And you want your apps and games to run beautifully on all those devices. So many developers add all those resources in their APKs to support architectures and screen densities and languages. And when you add all these resources, you increase the size of your app. So we've seen two main reasons why apps keep getting bigger. You add awesome features, and you add resources to support all the Android devices out there. But we've also seen that increasing the app size comes with downsides. And I'm sure some of you have considered the following trade-off before. Do I keep on adding features and resources so my app runs really well on all those devices, but I lose installs and drive more uninstalls along the way? This is a pretty bad trade-off. We don't want you to be making those kind of trade-offs. So there is a current way to optimize your app for different uh, device configurations. Um, We call it multiple APKs. Uh, But it's kind of inefficient, and frankly, we think it can be quite tedious. Uh, This is what it looks like in the Play Console when you have to upload dozens of APKs for each of your releases. 
the number of ABKs can grow quite quickly with different dimensions, for example, 64 bit versus 32 bits, smaller screens, larger screens, um, and so on. And then on top of that, you have to version each APK individually, which kind of adds to the, to the complexity about this. Um, it also doesn't ha ha help with all of the dimensions. For example, for languages, you still need to include all languages in each one of your APKs. So multi-APK is, you know, kind of not a solution. It's not great. We know we can do better. Uh, let's look at the actual solution we've built for this and how the new app model helps make your life easier in this area. New app model is focused on improving the entire user acquisition journey from discovery through to retention. It helps by making your app smaller uh, and as such kind of improving both your install and uninstall rate. And in addition to that, it makes managing your releases much easier. In this session, we're going to talk about four steps in the user acquisition journey we want to help you with. First, we want to help you with discovery by allowing users to try your apps. Then, we want to help you convert users to installers. Next, we want to allow you to deliver features and functionality on demand to different audiences when they need it. And finally, we want to help you retain your users with the latest and greatest version of your app. We are going to start by how we help you make your installs smaller. This is the first step in your journey as a developer, and this is where we made a big announcement at Google I.O. with the Android App Bundle. We are going to talk about the other steps in the user acquisition journey later in this talk. So here is the big idea. Google Play can assist and take care of delivering only what is needed to each device on your behalf. Uh, there is no need to send a bunch of resources or languages to, to, to users' devices if they're not going to need them. Um, we support three slicing dimensions out of the box, CPU architectures, languages, and screen densities. To take advantage of this, start building with a new publishing format, the Android App Bundle. <laughs> The size reduction varies, um, but on average, we're seeing 35% size savings compared to a universal APK. This is huge. So with the bundle, you get resource slicing for free, and you're also on the road to using dynamic features and offering instant experiences, both of which we'll talk about later. And We've been chatting a lot to developers like you about what is the thing they like about the, the bundle most. Recently, we did a workshop with some developers in India uh, who make some, some of the most popular apps over there, uh, Riafi, Redbus, and Swiggy. These developers have millions of installs, and they're very sophisticated in keeping the size of their app small because their users are very sensitive to it. Riafi found that smaller installs improved their conversion rate. Redbus found that releases were streamlined and much easier to manage. And Swiggy found that switching was a simple process, and they were able to start testing with the bundle within an hour. And it's not just developers in India. As you can see here, developers all around the world are switching and are seeing fantastic size savings. For example, Duolingo saw 56% size savings compared to Universal APK. This huge savings is very difficult to achieve with only incremental optimization. So switching to the app bundle is the single most impactful thing developers can do to reduce the size of their app. And Google Apps are switching as well. YouTube, Google Maps, and Google News are all today in production with Android app bundles. So as you can see, this is not experimental. This is ready. We have thousands of app bundles in production today. It's time for all developers to switch to the new publishing format. As a matter of fact, we've just crossed 10,000 overnight tonight. Yeah, yesterday. Um, in Android Studio 3.2, which is now stable and available to all developers, you can build bundles. It's very similar to building an APK, so the switch is pretty straightforward for most developers. And in the Play Console, we're starting to show you this 
very colorful chart, when we think you could benefit from moving to the bundle, we'll take a common reference device and we'll calculate how much you saved comparing to a universal APK. And we're excited to share that games using Unity can now start building the bundle too. Unity added support for app bundles in the 2018-3 beta release, and you can join this beta right now. OK, so I think many of you have heard about all this already, but let me explain how it actually works. The way it works is you put everything related to your app in the bundle, play processes the bundle, and generates these optimized APKs. We sign the APKs and deliver each signed APK to, to each individual user device. This means that the new app model requires you to, to upload your uh, signing key to Google Play. And again, in conversations I've had with developers like yourselves, sometimes I've heard a question of, like, is this secure? And the, up, the answer is absolutely. Rest assured that we take this very, very seriously. Uh, we protect your keys in the same storage, and we protect Google's own signing keys. Uh, we have a large team of engineers focused entirely on security, and you will benefit from our ongoing investments in this area. And the reason this step is so critical is because when we have the signing key, we can optimize the app that we deliver to devices on an ongoing basis without your continuous work and improvements. Kobe, do you want to share one of those examples? Sure. So because Google Play does the processing, we can introduce those kind of optimizations without asking you to put any time and effort. So we just launched a new optimization for developers who upload app bundles for an Android OS um, feature that was introduced in Android M called uncompressed native libraries. You know, before Android M, you need to provide native libraries compressed, and the OS uncompresses them so it installs two copies on the device. After Android M, you can provide your native libraries uncompressed, and the OS only installs a single copy, saving a lot of space. Now, because Google Play does the processing, we can do it for you. But if, if we haven't, you actually need to fork your app for pre-M and post-M with multi-APK, which is pretty painful. And who would want to do that, right? So we're doing it for you. If you're using the app bundle, you just give us your native libraries, compressed or uncompressed. We create the different flavors for pre-M and post-M saving users a lot of space on the device. The numbers you see here, for example, are for Gameloft's game, My Little Pony. These numbers are on top of the numbers they actually got from switching to the bundle in the first place. The numbers we're seeing on average across the entire app corpus are still very significant. 8% reduction in the download size on average and 16% reduction in size on disk on average. So with this optimization, the download is smaller, the install is faster, and it takes less space on disk. And this is a, exactly the kind of optimizations we can introduce on your behalf without asking you to put any time or effort. And I guess some of you might be thinking, well, if we provide Google Play our libraries uncompressed, it might increase the size of the artifact we upload to Google. And some of you might be worried that it may push your limit over the 100 megabyte upload limit we have in the Play Console. So the good news is that we're actually changing all the size logic in the Play Console to be based on the compressed download size. You know, the upload size isn't really meaningful, especially not in a world of, mo of, of app bundles. It is not what the user downloads, and it's not what ends on their device. So starting today, all the size validations in the Play Console are based on the compressed download size. And there is one more change we're making to the app size limits. We were very keen to make life easier, even for developers of large apps who rely on expansion files today. So I'm happy to announce we are increasing the download size for APKs generated from the bundle from 100 megabytes to 500 megabytes. This means that for apps up to 500 megabytes, you can stop using expansion files entirely. 
This doesn't change the size warning on the Play Store, but it does mean that releasing large app is much easier to manage. Adobe has been testing large app bundles with us uh, with their new video editing app, Adobe Premiere Rush. This premium video editing software is coming soon to Android and Chromebooks. Adobe Premium Rush uses a lot of native code, so this means that for them, Bundle saves them quite a lot of disk space on each individual user device. We are inviting early access partners to start testing this with us, so if you're interested, please reach out to your BD manager. Okay, so to recap, that was the latest for the Android app bundle and how we are making your app smaller and your releases simpler. The next big change that the new app model introduces is modularization and dynamic code loading. This is an approved, safe way to load functionality and features dynamically, making your app stall smaller at install time. Let me tell you how this works. Dynamic features are conceptually sim similar to all the other things we do for, for, for app bundles. You don't need to send the same features to 100% of your users if you know that only maybe about 10% uh, of them will be using it. However, there is one big difference between kind of dynamic feature modularization and resource modularization, and that is that feature modularization doesn't happen among predefined binaries. Basically, you are in full control around how you slice out your app and what are the things you want to uh, uh, deliver dynamically. Dynamic features can be installed on demand when users request them, or you can choose to defer the installation to a later time, for example, when app goes to the, to the background. On pre-L devices that don't support uh, dynamic features, we fuse all these optionals into the, the main app so it's delivered at the install time. All of these use cases that I've just very briefly went through are currently supported in production by some of the largest apps on the platform, and millions of users have been benefiting from them already. Facebook was one of our launch partners for this functionality, and currently they're using dynamic features in production across their entire app portfolio. Let's take a look at their story. So app size is really important to Facebook. When launching new features, they evaluate the features benefit with the size it actually adds to the app. Dynamic features allow them to add functionality to apps like Facebook and Facebook Lite without increasing the size of the app at install time. Dynamic features are also important to their high-end device strategy because they can ship specific advanced features only to supported devices. They can also remove features over time to save space so the feature don't stay for the lifetime of the app. Facebook told us that dynamic features work especially well for new features that are separate, logically separate from, from the main app. They can have a separate team of engineers work on that feature, and they can then add them to the app without impacting its base install size. Here are some cool examples of features that are used today in production by Facebook apps. One example, for example, is card scanning. Card scanning is a functionality that is only used by a small percentage of Facebook user base. So by turning this into a dynamic features, they avoid shipping almost two megabyte to every user device. Another example is real-time communication. By moving voice and video chat to a dynamic feature, they can make sure these features are only shipped to devices that support them and only to users who are interested in using those features. So this is about dynamic features. They make it possible for you to build highly configurable apps, and as we've seen, used in production by some of the biggest developers on, on the platform. Now let's talk about another type of module. The Android App Bundle support instant app modules. So the next section is all about the first step in the user acquisition journey and how we help you with discovery by helping users try your apps. We've been working on instant apps over the past two years and improving it based on your feedback. We recently made URLs optional, and we've added try now flow on the Play Store. 
Google Play Instant is now on 1.3 billion devices, and it is highly compelling. Historically, it used to be non-trivial effort for developers to adopt this because of the independent build and release process. Now you don't have to worry about building and maintaining your instant app separately from your uh, installed app. As of recently, the Android app bundle supports instant apps and makes adoption much easier. In Android Studio 3.2, you can build an instant app with the app bundle format. This lets you benefit from all the bundle size optimizations, which means that you can get under the instant app limit much easier. The requirements in general are pretty simple. Your instant app module and your main app entry point module need to be under 10 megabytes to enable the Try Now button in the Play Store. And you need to handle permissions gracefully, like all apps should anyway. But that's not all. It's going to become even easier. In Android Studio 3.3, beta version, you can now build and upload a single artifact for your instant and installed app. We let you upload an artifact of any size to the Play Console, and then you can start reducing the size of the artifact to meet the 10 megabyte limit. As we've seen earlier, using dynamic features is a key strategy in reducing the size of, of your app. This makes it possible for many, many more of you to start offering instant experiences for your installed apps. And developers going down this road are seeing great success because by offering a trial, you can capture many users who would have otherwise moved on without installing your app. Ultimate Guitar, you see here, told us that once they launched their instant app, they've seen 8% increase in their install size, and the 20% of users who click Try Now ended up installing the app. So this is about how we allow you to now offer instant experiences using the Android app bundle. Now let's talk about the final step in the user acquisition journey, retaining users over time. And one of the ways you do that is by making sure users use your latest and greatest app version. And you know that Google Play offers auto-updates functionality and many, many users have auto-update turned on, but not all users. And in some markets, even though users have auto-updates turned on, they never actually connect to Wi-Fi, so they don't get to update their apps. I'm very happy to announce that today we're launching a new API that allows you to prompt users to update without ever leaving your app. You can call this API to determine if there is an update available and if so, you can show prompt to users ask, asking them to, to accept the update. In this example, Flow is designed for immediate, critical use cases like privacy or revenue affecting bugs. It's a full screen experience uh, where the user is expected to wait until the download is complete so that they can kind of take and start using the, the new experience. Uh, we make this quite easy for you to adopt because we take care of all the updating of the app and the entire life cycle related to that. Uh, I think some of you have already built flows similar to this, but this is now a standardized method which can be adopted very, very easily. However, instead of an immediate update, you can also do a flexible update with this API, which doesn't have to be applied straight away. This is actually my favorite part about this API. You can completely customize the update experience so that it really feels like something that's part of your app. For example, you may decide to very gently nudge users with an inline flow, like Google Chrome is, is doing in this example. Um, and once the user accepts the, the update, the download starts in the background so users can keep using your app while the download is, is being fetched. Once the download is complete, it's basically up to you to decide when you want to apply it. You can do that straight away and ask user to, to, to restart the app. You can wait for the app to go back to background or, or for users to, to stop using it. Google Chrome is testing this now. We are inviting all of you to join us in testing this. Again, reach out to your BD manager if you would like to join us. OK, so to recap, ensuring more users use your latest release is important. You can do that by following some of these best practices here or by integrating with our uh, in-app updates API. 
The API is available for any app, so you can get started with it even while you're in the process of switching to the Android app bundle. So all the efforts we showed you today are all about helping you drive more installs and fewer uninstalls, offer highly configurable apps through dynamic features, and keep your users up to date. If you want to come and chat to us, we'll be around with a few folks from our product and engineering teams. If you want to share anything you've heard about today, this link to the Medium post is a great place to start. Thank you for listening, and enjoy playtime. Thank you.